Okay, so today we will, we will be going over the axle skeleton, and this time we will be doing the vertebrae, um, which is the second part of the axle skeleton, and then after this we'll be doing the ribs to complete it. Now, uh, break down the vertebrae, we have seven cervical, or the superior region slash neck vertebrae. We have 12 thoracic vertebrae, which each articulate with each of the 12 ribs. Uh, we have five lumbar vertebrae, and we have one sacral bone with five evolutionarily fused vertebrae called sacral vertebrae. So we have one sacral bone, but we have five fused vertebrae, so we kind of count them. And then lastly, we five, we have four coccygeal vertebrae. So in total, we have about 33 vertebrae. Now let's get into the thoracic vertebrae. Now why do I start with the thoracic first? We'll, we'll get into that, but the thoracic in general represents the average vertebrae and it has most of the parts that all vertebrae uh, after it will have. So this is T1 through T12, it's in the thoracic region. You can see that each one of them articulates with some sort of rib. Now, sorry for the bad quality here, but uh, uh, first we'll go superiorly to uh, inferiorly uh, as per the transverse uh, view or superior view. So first we got the spinous process over here. Now this is a, a spine of it. Now, it's missing from this picture, and I will go over it in future pictures, but over here we would have the lamina. Uh, it's just called the lamina, nothing else, but over here, this uh, abounding area here is the lamina. And now over here we have the transverse processes, and these go uh, on the transverse uh, plane, kind of. Here, they transect the body, so we call these the transverse processes. And then over here, we'd have the transverse costal facet. Now, some anatomy classes will call this the facet for articulating part of tubercle or rib, but you can either call it the transverse facet or transverse costal facet. Most, uh, most classes will be fine with it. And then over here, we have the superior articulating facet. And this over here, so they're both facets, and they have some sort of a cartilage associated with them. And over here, we have the vertebral foramen. Okay. And then we have the superior uh, costal facet, but we would actually call that the superior demifacet, to be more accurate, because it's half a facet, it's more flat. So superior demifacet or superior costal facet. And then over here in between the transverse processes and the body of the vertebrae or the corpus, we would have the, the pedicles here. So these are pedicles, and it's not here. Sorry about that. And now, looking at laterally, we have uh, the superior vertebr vertebral notch here. I haven't heard of that being tested, but there is a superior vertebral notch. Uh, again, we have the superior costal facet, the superior uh, articulating facet. Remember, the superior costal facet, uh, just call it the superior demi facet. And then uh, we have the pedicle over here. So this part, and then that transverse costal facet over here, which articulates with um, uh, one of the ribs. And then over here, some new parts, we have the uh, inferior vertebral notch. Now when two vertebrae articulate, what's gonna happen to that notch is gonna turn into a foramen. So we call that the inter uh, intervertebral foramen, because you need two to make it. And then now sometimes we have the inferior costal facet over here. And then the inferior articular facet. And the spinous process points down. Now, most of thoracic vertebrae are going to point down at a very steep angle. So that's how you can tell that this is probably a thoracic vertebrae. So now let's move on to the cervical vertebrae. Uh, C1 through C7. Now this is the neck, neck vertebrae. And they tend to have this really long spinous process. Now the first cervical vertebrae, uh, well, no, not all vertebrae are analogous, so let's go over the atlas first. This is a C1. This connects or articulates to the occipital condyle. Um, and this is quite different from the uh, one of the, the most common vertebrae that we saw, the, the, the thoracic vertebrae. So um, and, uh, all you need to really remember is that the superior articulating facet is quite uh, quite much larger here. And they have tubercles on each end instead of the spinous process, for the C1 at least. 
And you'll begin to notice that all the cervical vertebrae, they have these transverse foramina. And we still have transverse processes, remember? And this foramina, you have the vertebral artery, I believe, that runs through there. And you have a vertebral foramen. Now, this is another example of an atypical vertebra. This is axis uh, or the C2. This articulates with the atlas. So this dens or the odontoid process more specifically uh, is only found on the C2. Uh, and that's how you can tell this is a C2 vertebra. And it has everything else here. Now, uh, lumbar vertebrae, L1 through L5, are uh, arguably the most simple vertebrae because they don't really have anything special uh, to them. They're just like all the other ones, most of the other ones. Uh, so right here with our spinous process, our superior articulating uh, facets. This, this is the process and this is the facet. We take, we don't need to remember the fa uh, process. These are the facets. And over here we have the pedicles and then the transverse processes. And this, the lumbar vertebrae will begin to realize uh, only the thoracic vertebrae have the transverse uh, facets. See, there's no superior demi facets on the lumbar because they don't articulate with anything else. And then over here we have the lamina, which we talked about was well, not included on the thoracic vertebrae picture, but every vertebrae or most have the lamina. All right now, let's go into the sacrum. Uh, well, the sacrum is actually considered a vertebra or part of the vertebral column and the axial skeleton at least. Um, so it's important to learn uh, parts of the sacrum, which is uh, pretty difficult, uh, more difficult than you would think. Um, but most of the things I will be talking about are what you're going to be tested on, but everything that is listed here could be fair game, depending on what class you're taking. But for introductory uh, uh, classes, say, uh, what I'm going to be talking about is mostly what you're going to be tested on. So the sacral vertebrae is made of uh, five different segments, and evolutionarily they've been fused because they had a, a selective advantage for the sacral vertebrae to be fused. So you have S1, S2, S3, S4, and S5. And then starting superior to uh, inferiorly, we have the base of the sacrum. And then we still have the superior articulating processes like all the other vertebrae. So that would be uh, articulate with the L5 vertebrae. And over here we have the sacral ala, or the wings of the sacrum. And then we will have the uh, what appears to be um, the uh, spaces in between these vertebrae that are fused. So, it's analogous to the intervertebral foramen, foramina, but these are called sacral foramen. Uh, and we have anterior and posterior sacral foramen. So we have eight of them, four on each side. And then we will go into the coccyx later, but the uh, coccyx is pretty simple. Now the apex of the sacrum is where the uh, sacrum articulates to the coccyx or connects to it. Now you can see the superior articulating uh, facets here. This is the process. The sacral canal right here. And the beginning of the sacral canal is the sacral hiatus over here. The sacral corner are these little nibs on each side, these kind of tubercle looking things. And then this spinosaurus that contains called the medial sacral crest. And remember, everything that I have said here is all fair game. Uh, or everything that is listed here is all fair game. This is, I just pull out the internet. Um, but um, as far as the, uh, what I've said, uh, for an introductory class, that's pretty much all you will need to know for the coccyx. Now, some considerations about vertebra, uh, vertebrae. Only C3 through C6 have a bifid on the end of the spinous process. And what I mean by that is um, at the ends of the cervical vertebrae, you will have the spinous process, but you will also have this peach-looking thing on the end. They have, uh, peach have two different lobes, and then we call it a bifid. So only this uh, vertebrae through this one will have uh, the bifid. Now, sometimes others will have bifid, and a bifid is more an advanced uh, thing, so you might not be tested on it. Uh, all cervical vertebrae have a transverse foramen, uh, which is unique to only the cervical vertebrae. So remember, going back to the cervical vertebrae, we have the transverse foramen uh, here, where the vertebral artery runs through. Um, uh, and uh, similarly, uh, thoracic vertebrae have the uh, most parts and they're very unique in that they have a ton of facets and demi facets. Uh, only the thoracic vertebrae have transverse articulating facets and superior demi facets. So going back to the thoracic vertebrae, uh, you can see here 
the only uh, only thoracic have the superior or uh, uh, demi facets and the transverse articulating facets. You have a lot of facets here because they articulate with the ribs, which are uh, highly motile when it comes to uh, a, uh, a a amphiarthrotic joint, which is we will be getting to that later. Um, only thoracic vertebrae, yeah. Uh, so five lumbar vertebrae are the simplest uh, when it comes to parts, but they are the largest vertebrae, and the um, the inside of the disc or this marrow here is going to be uh, very large relative to the border so that's how you can tell in a test maybe that this is a lumbar or you can tell there's well there's no there's no superior demi facets here so it must uh, not be a thoracic and there's no indication that this would be a cervical vertebrae because it doesn't have sorry any uh, transverse foramen so this must be a lumbar now next, uh, only the thoracic vertebrae articulate the ribs, obviously. Uh, so T12, uh, T1 through T12, and then rib 1 through rib 12. And so they're all respective. And then lastly, the sacrum is considered a, a part of the vertebral column, uh, as well as the coccyx. That's important to remember. All right, I hope this, guy, uh, this video cleared up everything for you guys, and I hope you do well. Thank you.